Hey, what's up, Zach here, and today I've got the all-new Curry Flow 11, and if you're one of those players that really liked the idea of the 9 and the 10, kind of the designs of them, but just didn't like them in practicality, the 11s might solve a lot of those problems. So, let's get into them. Now, starting off in the uppers, the thing I really like about the 11s is that, yes, they are still using a lot of Under Armour Warp, which is that really nice macro and micro chain linking, which just does give really an outsized containment for what it is, but it really only extends across the lateral side of the shoe. It's then reinforced those textiles over the toe cap, and then on the medial side, it's just a little bit more forgiving. So the shoe in general is just a little bit more forgiving in the uppers versus some previous ones, which could really induce a lot of cramping because UA Warp is really strong and it does not want to expand. So I like that they put it where you needed it on the lateral side and then made it just a little bit more forgiving on the rest of the shoe. Now, the tongue is nice and padded. Uh, they are all outrigger lace eyelets except for the last one. You do get a comfortable tie down on these. I would say for the higher and higher arched people that get in these, you're gonna have a little bit more and more and more heel slipping. I did not find it much of a problem. And I think if you did, you just put some moleskin here or there in the shoe. But I think those people with very high arches, people that put orthotics in there, um, there might just be a tad of slippage in there. And what I, I think it was a really nice idea in these is not only is there an external heel counter, which I, I really like, I, I love external heel counters, but there is a little bit of a cup under here in the heel, so you do sink into these ones. If you look at the upper durability test though, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the cool thing is there's like this iridescent you know, shimmering layer here. The bird does start to get through it. It does not get all the way through that drag guard layer, plus the flow foam goes up all the way over the toe cap. Now these are not meant for outdoor courts whatsoever. So I think with this, I like it because that layer that I went through with the burr is very slick. So I think the friction won't get super high on those courts. Plus, which we'll talk about in the outsole section, you got that flow there to grip when you're really getting everted very well. So overall, I think it's a good design choice. The one thing I would have liked a little bit more was maybe combined internal and and external eyelets. I think that may would have given it's a little more of a durable lockdown, but overall, I much, much, much improved. The only thing you gotta watch out for with the uppers is the breathability. If you look at it on the breathability test, they did heat up 115.7 degrees. But also if you look at that airflow mapping, I think that tells more of the story. It really is only getting through the UA warp layer. Now, if you look on the inside of the uppers, there is netting, which is really nice, like a jersey material netting that goes right out into the warp layer. So you are getting a lot of airflow through the lateral side of the shoe. It's just the medial side of the shoe a little bit less airflow. The tongue does not allow a lot of airflow. I noticed on when I was having the heat gun on there, really the only place I, I felt air coming out was also that warp layer. So it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde. The lateral side's okay. On the medial side is a little bit more heat trapping. So remember, these are meant to be used indoors. So as long as you're not taking them out into crazy hot conditions, I think they'll be okay, especially because the shoe is so light. So I, I'm not so sure they're gonna be super encumbering on you. Like I said, just watch out for the, you know, the air specific airflow patterns of the shoe. Now getting into the midsole teardown, unlike from the nine to the 10 where there wasn't much difference, the 10 to the 11, there's a lot of differences in the midsole, especially with the shank, how it's broken up, which I kind of like because that serration here in the forefoot or those break points in the forefoot do allow some very easy transition step. It allows a lot of easy bending at the metatarsal phalangeal joints, which I, I really like, especially if you, people that like the flow line for the protection of that shank, but also want a little bit more forgiveness. The other thing is there, this is a two layer foam setup, right? You got the flow carrier on the outside, then you got this giant slab on the inside. Now, to me, under the microscope, they don't look really any different. The durometer on them is both the same. It both comes in at a five from the carrier foam to that internal foam. So I'm not sure if this is a different formulation of flow foam, which, you know, flow foam is the same material as diaper elastic. So you can, you know, mix and match those materials and you can kind of dial one up and one down in terms of the chemical makeup of flow foam to make it more forgiving, more shock absorbing versus more energy returning. If you look at it on the bounce height test, you got 33 centimeters here in the heel, which is mostly that internal foam. Whereas in the forefoot, a little bit more of a carrier foam to internal foam ratio got 39 centimeters. So you can tell that the carrier foam, a little bit more bouncy, a little more shock absorbing on that internal foam, which would make a lot of sense because what your foot's sitting on, you want it to be a little bit more forgiving, but you still have that wicked performing flow foam with that just crazy bounce and crazy snap that it gives you. But getting into what is undoubtedly the craziest part of the 11s is the outsole tread. You wouldn't think so because it looks pretty similar to the 910s, stamped flow foam. 
This foam is way tackier than the 9s and the 10s, at least the model I got. Number one, like I've said so often, you know, the sound a shoe makes or the squeakiness this shoe has on court does not always equate to how much grip you're gonna get. Case in point, the Curry 11, they're silent. They just, they make zero noise, but they do not budge. Even after about an hour or two on court when these things were getting pretty dusty, you can actually see the picture, these things were picking up a little bit of dust they were still gripping like crazy. Whereas, you know, some other shoes, especially something like these where they rely mostly on surface area to get grip versus some other shoes that have the real razor edges and that's how they grip into the court. Even with that, these were still gripping like crazy. So uh, to me, this flow foam is maybe just a little bit tackier. Um, this has a little bit better intimate contact with the court. If you look at these on the speed ratio, they come in at a 2.66 which I think kind of undersells these shoes just because their cutting power is so good. You get the de pretty decent containment of the warp in the uppers. You know, it's not the way of weight all City 11, but for the weight of the shoe and the profile of the shoe, these things cut and stop really well. The one thing I will say is, is if you are someone that slides into the shoe a lot because these grip so crazily and because they just have so much tack, you might start sliding into the shoe. So you may want to throw a piece of like adhesive moleskin under the tongue or a pad under there just to stop your foot from moving forward or a pair of socks with grippers on these would work really well, a texture, orthotic, whatever. Um, that'll really help stop any of those issues you get from having these be just so gripping. But the one thing that hasn't changed between flow models is its outsole durability. If you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, same as the nines and the tens, the burr just rips right through there. Like I said, durometer is only five, which is you know that of a midsole foam. So these really should stay on indoor hardwood or rubberized quartz. And these are meant for players that are very light on their feet, people that, that are very kind of easy on their shoes. So just take that into consideration if you're looking to buy them. The fit of the Curry 11s though was pretty surprising to me as well. Uh, much more forgiving for more foot types versus the nines and the tens. A narrow medium foot thing could true to size. A 2E foot, you can try to break in at your true size if you want a real performance fit, you're gonna be cramping though. So I'd say go up a half size. A 4E, I still don't know if this is a great shoe for that because I think you'll introduce too much heel slippage if you have to go up, you know, at one size or whatever. So I try to stay in that one half to, to true size range in these so you get the really good lockdown. The thing though that I really liked about the 11s versus the 9s and the 10s is that they are actually decent for ankle sprainers. The shape of the shoe, most of the curries are hot dog shaped, but this one's just a little bit more forgiving in the midfoot and because that shank is broken up in the forefoot, you just get that little bit more proprioception, that little bit more tactile feel, especially because the grip on these is just so elite. So I, I would say they're not the best things out there for an ankle sprainer, but they are not bad either. So um, a huge improvement. Plus with the flow foam, like most other Curry shoes, they're really good for any other little snake bites you might have on the bottom of your foot. The one thing I would watch out for is putting a very bulky orthotic in there. As you can see, the ankle counter is swooped very low. So if you do have a very bulky orthotic in there, it is gonna push up a little bit in the shoe. That does bring me though to today's sponsor, which is Power Step and their Pulse Orthotics, which I think would be a perfect match for these. Because those Pulse Orthotics have such a low heel cup in there, you can get it so far down into the shoe while still getting that great broad arch support that Power Step gives, like I've said in so many videos, just that elite arch support and arch coverage that rivals most custom orthotics. So if you do wanna check those out, I will leave a link in the description below. Thank you again to Power Step for sponsoring this video and onto the performance. And when looking at the performance of the 11s, I think it's best to compare them to the most recent versions, the 9s and the 10s, which I thought were very, very similar. The 10s a little bit better than the 9s, but the 11s were just, I think, a clear step up right? So much more stable side to side, just so much more sure footed, right? And more comfortable, you know? So I think if you're somebody that, you know, is like Steph Curry, right? Very light on your feet, kind of hopping around the court and you want something that has that light feel, but really bouncy and, and springy feel too underfoot. I honestly think these are one of the best shoes out there right now for dunkers or people that are trying to get rebounds. They're kind of like under that 200 pound range, right? You know, a little bit of a lighter player that still wants a shoe with just crazy launch because it's that flow foam doing most of the work. It's so resilient. So I think these have the best qualities of the nines and the tens, super nimble footwork, really unobtrusive 
exclusive of a shoe, really great launch for the weight of them, right? Really great bounce to weight ratio, but they're much more forgiving and they're much more laterally stable. So if you are, I think anywhere in that shifty guard range, even like a more shifty forward, right? I think you can really find just something you love in these shoes. So for me, this is probably one of the most improved shoes year over year or model year over model year. Um, there've been a lot of those, you know, this year, especially in, in the tennis space too, that have just really improved from last year to this year. And, and this shoe, I finally feel like it, it matches the potential of the materials and the engineering. You know, the, finally the design and the actual raw performance and the on foot performance uh, and just, you know, the, kind of the biomechanics of it match the potential that this shoe had. So kudos to Under Armour for really extracting the most out of the materials that they had. So I would love to hear your thoughts on the 11s. Are you trying them after the 9s and the 10s? I know the 9s and the 10s really it kind of divide the community sometimes. People really like that feel, that snug feel. You know, in the 11s, like I said, are going to be a little more forgiving. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to take a deep dive into the specific brace that Steph Curry is wearing with the Curry Flow 11, the Zamst A2DX, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. And of course, in all Under Armour Flow Foam videos, specifically diaper elastic foam. I'll see you somewhere in the same universe.